ski choke from the back. Um, we're going to talk about a couple different things in this position about this basic choke. First of all, let's notice the way that the mechanic of the choke works. All right, let's talk about that for a second. Look at the collar, the way that the collar is shaped. The inside of the collar, it's a big, thick band, okay? And this band right now is just contouring around his neck, okay, the way it's designed. The big flat part on the inside. The choke, the way the choke is done is one thumb is super, super, super deep. Other hand under his arm, secondary hand goes to the opposite side of the knee. Now, with this arm, I go across the neck, almost like we're cutting the neck done. And the second arm, the secondary arm goes straight down. Okay, so this one goes across, this one goes straight down. And that's the basic idea of the choke. However, um, there's one fine point about this choke that makes it way, way, way more devastating and, and adds a tremendous amount of pressure onto this choke. It's a detail that Henzo always told us about, um, that he always saw 90% of the jiu-jitsu world doing this choke wrong. And again, it's because of the way that the gi is set. The inside of the gi, again, this big, thick part, contours around the neck. And what most people do, and this is what he explained, is they grab with that grip contouring around the neck, okay? So from here, yeah, it's super tight, but I'm playing into the way that the fabric is already set, so it's kind of comfortable, right? That's the way it was designed. What we do is I turn the grip downward, okay? So now what happens? The seam, if I turn it downward, it creates a sharp tension line here, which now when I apply that choke, digs into the neck way, way, way more efficient. Okay? So guys, come on to this side so you guys can see, please. If our goal is to cut off the artery on this side, if the fabric is flat against it, it's tight, yeah, and it does its job but the same exact space and distance that I have here is tremendously impounded by just turning it in. And now again, it adds a tremendous tension line, almost like a rope that now cuts into the artery. Look how it cuts in. So Ralph could tell you easily which one feels more comfortable, this or that, yeah, right? You could feel it's a lot more comfortable here. It's not as much choking pressure. Now. From this position, so I'm here, I have one arm under controlling, let's say, and one arm here. The primary strangle hand, the primary secondary, uh, sorry, the secondary hand here. So from this position, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna feed. As I feed, and traditionally we just went up and grab. No, I'm gonna go up and turn it down, then grab, okay? Then I grip to the other side. Now, from this seated guard position, okay, or seated back position. The best way to get this choke to work is watch what I do. I don't just apply here, okay? I have to add leverage to the choke. I could get it from here, yeah, but he can move around a lot and defend. So what do I do? Notice how my hooks are here on the leg. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull them to one side. As I pull them to one side, I release the hook and then his shoulder hits the ground. I bring my leg over the top back of his shoulder and then I apply the tremendous choking power. 